This is Pat K, a world-class photographer originally based in Sydney, and seven years ago when I was 19, me and my friends would go on crazy adventures literally just to go to these same places he shot before, simply because we're inspired by him. Fast forward seven years and now I have traveled around the globe to Japan just so he can roast a few of my photos and give me some feedback because photography is hard in a video-centric world. So here we are today with the Pat K. I've probably gone over a little bit of a spiel, but long story short, world-class photographer, he knows exactly what he's doing. I've prepared a few photos for him. We'll see what he thinks about these and yeah. let's just go ahead and find out if I'm a fraud or <laughs> actually an okay photographer. You'll be alright, you'll be alright. I'll go gentle, I promise. Do you need to introduce yourself? I probably have already given you the best introduction already, <laughs> but would you like to tell the audience who you are? Uh, yeah, so I'm Pat K. I'm a travel photographer. All right, let's go with a very <laughs> basic one first. This is, Pat Keg may have even taken this, I'm not even sure. What? All right, so we've got the first photo here. Do you want to give me a little bit of a, a rundown, a little bit of a story um, on this shot? Only because, you know, most of the time when you when you look at images, right, yeah. you don't get a chance to, to understand a lot about the photographer. In doing it in this way with me and you here, like right now, I think, it, there's a there's an opportunity to yeah. explain context which is a little bit different to how you would normally consume an image. First things first, I'm not sure if Pat likes this, but anyway. So this photo was when we were actually went to Japan and it was just like a little bit of a golden hour. You know, there's a nice light on this uh, fisherman, Mount Fuji in the back ground. He's like, it's a bit of a centered image, everything in the center. That's very easy when it comes to photos. I tried to get a little bit of a foreground. I used the 51.2, nice bokeh in the foreground. You love that. And like there's that. like kind of some of the waves in the foreground a little bit, mm -hmm. which makes it a little bit more interesting. Yeah. I thought it was a bit of a cool shot, a nice natural person in Japan. I mean, look, this this image is, is for me... Uh, I can I can see the 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 resemblance of the style that I use is is what I'll say. <laughs> um, you know I've especially in in yeah our last our last trip. Um, you know I was like back last year in Sakura season. Uh, I took something similar, albeit within with. I mean when you go there and you like you do your best to like mix up the shots and and take something different to to everyone else who has come before. And I think this is this is like just a well executed version of that. I think um, you know, there are a couple of things, especially with this kind of composition, that are a little bit tricky to uh to balance. Here you've got the fisherman and he takes up this portion of the image, like this this much of the image. However, you know, he's not in the very center vertically of the entire frame. Right, and so the center of the frame is probably here where his feet is standing. Yeah, and so when you're like visually weighting it, this initially to me has a lot of weighting on the foreground because the fisherman is a little bit higher than the middle ground of the image. You know, maybe push him down a little bit, down a little bit to like the middle, or at least have the horizon in the middle as well, the horizon line here. It to me would feel a little bit more balanced, even though you would have more empty sky and more you know, uh, empty space and that kind of stuff. So I think like balance is is tricky because it's like, you know, what do you what do you put directly vertical center? This thing on the left. <laughs> I forgot to clean that one up. Yeah, I forgot <laughs> to clean that up. So it's just it's glaringly obvious. It's like a yeah. white bar. In and... my defense, I think I photoshopped that out eventually, but it didn't make it here. It didn't. Okay, right, right. <laughs> Otherwise, like it's a it's it's a fantastic shot. Like, you know. It's good. Cool, cool. Well, rip straight from uh Pat K. Great. <laughs> While we're here, just by the way, that first image, what would you rate that out of ten? Uh what would I rate the first image out of ten? Yeah. Uh I mean I'm kinda of biased on that one because that's the kind of composition that I like. So it would probably like a like an eight. These are all Pat K points, you know, so just yeah. keep that in mind. This is nothing, no objective scale. Yeah, I mean, keep in mind my scale is like... Tens don't exist. I mean, no, tens do exist, oh, but it, yeah. it's so hard to get there. And I think the difference between a 10 and a 9 is like so gigantic for me. All right, so we've got the next image here. Nice, uh, nice little bird. Can I oh, guess? Bird. It's... New Zealand. Exactly. Oh, New Zealand. What a classic New Zealand shot. All right, tell me about it. Yep, so this is just the lovely Kia, which is a beautiful bird in New Zealand. And I was basically hiking, doing a long hike, and these Kias kind of just like fly up to you, bother you all the time. And I kind of saw these little shrubs. They looked a little bit um, intriguing to the eye with their little shapes, kind of a little bit of color and whatnot. And I just wanted to get them in the foreground. I wanted the Kia to like 
be just like frolicking in them. I mean, look, this is great. And and to get so close to a Kia and be able to shoot with like such amazing depth of field, um, I think, yeah, it's, it's such a gorgeous image. I can see what you've done um, in that, you know, you've put the eyes on the third and then the beak just slightly off center, I think. Maybe a little cropping. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you could afford to just you know just go off a, a little bit more. I think it's great. It, it, the the hard thing about wildlife stuff is it, it's just so like moment to moment, and so like instinctually having uh, an interesting composition or like moving your elements around in the field really quickly when you're shooting something that's most likely going to fly off in like <laughs> five seconds, right? Is, is quite difficult. There are a couple of nice things that you've done. So the first one is this, you've got this like mountain ridge in the background, um, which is nice. It's it's brown, it's, it's bokeh, it sets context for the rest of the image. Um, what I like, and this is a little bit more nitpicky advanced kind of thing. What, what could have been nice as a direction is if you just like squat it down like half a centimeter. Yeah. Then the bird's eye could have come up in between, directly between the the very top ridge line of this this yellow piece and the the very top ridge line of the actual mountain. And so those those two points, the eyes could have been you know sitting right in the middle. Oh. So compositionally, like as a frame, yeah, like as a, as a layered frame, you can have that directly in the middle, and it, and it looks more intentional. When you do it that way, the second direction you could have headed was the opposite. You could have like potentially, and I don't know the scenario, but like you may have like perhaps stood up or gone up and shot down a little bit more, right? Yeah. I wouldn't call this, you know, uh, an image to be feedbacked on that much. Like it's it's pretty damn good as it is. Oh, you did a you did a you did a great job. <laughs> cool. What would you rate this photo out of ten? As a bird image, as a wildlife image, man, this. Uh, Let's give a number, Pat. Yeah, look, uh, it's it's to me like a like a seven. All right. Which is good. All right. Good, not like great because yeah. in terms of like overall wildlife, you know the the ceiling for a ten out of ten is wildlife shot is like man there are some fantastic wildlife shots out there it's like you know so we've got the next image up this is image number three yes interesting 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 uh oh well basically this is in beautiful Lufthansa Island oh, and I'm um, jealous I've always wanted to go yeah just a bit of a Classic. This is a bit of a classic photo. I will admit, not super creative, but the lights at the time, you know, it's kind of well during these times of the day in winter. It's always like golden out, which is great. I wanted my uh, two people to be in the middle of those windows, and maybe that line going through kind of nice in a or like through their heads, kind of. And I think the, they're in the middle of the windows, which is kind of nice. And that's basically it. Um, I think like visually. It's it's a vis it's a very visually striking image initially. For me, it falls off quite a lot, like when you spend a little bit more time on it. And the reason why is the potential that this image could have had if you I don't know what time of day this was, but yeah. like let's say it was like sunset uh, sunrise or whatever. Um, if you had just waited like an extra ten minutes, or if it was sunset, then if you got there an extra ten minutes early, yeah. the light cutting through the house there. And not quite hitting the people is such a is such a miss for me, All right. because if it if it was hitting the people, then you know they would be super contrasty. They would pop out tremendously. They would stand out like like this, and it would be such a such a strong image. Yeah. But I see what you're trying to do. I think you, <laughs> the intention was good. All right, All the right. intention was good. Um, I also see that you were trying to frame the house, the arch of the house with the arch of the mountain. So you have this double triangle thing going on, which is which is kind of nice. In this instance, I think it would have been stronger if you if you stood a meter forward yeah. and got rid of all this uh, foreground element and then just had the reflection going on. All right. I think it would have cleaned it up a lot. And also, you know, you, you might have been able to like get close and potentially almost dip your camera into the water. Yeah. And doing so always leads to less ripply effects. Right. Like intention is what is what counts and, and you can you can always tell 
uh, the the level of photographer by you know the deliberate elements that they put into the image um, and I think you're very close to you just a couple of little tweaks here and there could have been like a could have been a banger out of 10 real quick out of 10 for me this is like a like a six ish 5.56 uh, six <laughs> yeah I, I like the colors you've done you've done nice uh, a nice job in the grading and stuff it's it's, it's nice uh, but yeah the, just what I mentioned before is like Fair just, enough. Just a little bit off I feel like Pat's being awfully nice. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> I mean, I think with feedback, right? Like you, you, you got to take the good with the bad and the bad with the good. All right, I, I can take anything, Pat. Anyway, <laughs> little warning. I don't think this photo is that great, but that's better because Pat tends to uh, like to show a model here and there. I just had to put this one in. So we got this photo. Okay. I would say the intention here is. I think I kind of stole this post from you and Steph, where like they really do this good, um, like breathe in fresh air, like model pose. Yeah, but exactly, exactly. So <laughs> rip that straight off from Pat K. And I just thought, you know, you got to learn and appropriate things. So we've got a little bit of that here. Um, this is also just a great sunrise, kind of like a cool spot with a nice background. And whatnot, and a bit of a portraity kind of shot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, no, that's good. I think it's nice. Uh, there's, there's like not a huge amount to be said here. I think actually, yeah, I say that, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna spiel off some stuff, and <laughs> it's gonna be like nothing. So basically, like in my mind, especially when you're shooting lifestyle portraits like this, as a photographer, my first like mindset always goes to, okay, it's my job as the photographer to really use the model and set them up for success in the composition in the best way possible when it comes to positioning and layout and all that kind of stuff. Like she she's nailed the shot and and the the kind of emotion that gets evoked with that expression. But I think compositionally, especially since it's your responsibility as the photographer to, you know, lay things out properly, I think there's a couple of things you could have done to make it a little bit better. Every single time I'm approaching an image, I'm always thinking about subject separation. So especially when it comes to people, uh, faces are especially important, right? Because faces, eyes, they are the, the windows to the soul. The eyes always have to be in focus, or at least the face has to be in focus, depending on what the, the pose is and all those kind of things. With this, again, it, it's, it is just a simple matter of just getting down just a head's worth yeah so that her face isn't so lost in in this you know the the city behind um you know if you if you had gone down just a little bit her face would have been above the horizon line and you would have had the sky contrasting her back yeah. the back of the head and so it would have just been like this very strong silhouette of the side of her her face another sydney maybe a sydney specific thing yeah uh is that you know sydney has all these lovely cliff sides that often can be arranged in such a way that you like frame your subject in them yeah and so this i feel this this top bit could have worked harder so you could have maybe scooted her back a little bit yeah um, and then like you scoot back as well and then this might have like arched out all the way around into the top right of the, the image and then you could have like framed her as well in like yeah. an arc right but as it stands it's like it's pretty good she does a lot of the heavy lifting of this <laughs> image uh, I'm not trying to knock you or anything but like you know that is that is half the image right you know yeah. you are shooting um, a model this is a portrait um, and so you know I think it's it's nice she has a lovely expression, uh, but yeah, just those little few tweaks here and there could have been better. One little question is um, if she's above the horizon, yep. how, where would the horizon like end up? Like at her neck or like, like all the way, like you can't really see the horizon or? Some people like to use the horizon line as something that directs your attention into something. Right. So there's like, for example, like a very flat horizon line and then suddenly there's a head in the middle. Yeah. And then the horizon line keeps going. And and some people use that, that horizon line as like a leading line into the thing you're supposed to see. Yeah. I personally find that quite distracting in most cases for portraits. Um, and so ending that horizon line anywhere below, I think is, is fine. Like as long yeah. as it's below the head, it doesn't really matter that much. I was just gonna say, I think I angled it like this 
because I want to get the iconic Bronte pool in this image in the background to show. Uh, so the question is, you know, should it just be a good photo or should I try and get locational elements in there? I mean, you could have done that as well, but maybe even shot like, like stood up and then shot down into it. You know what I mean? And then you could have like framed her head in Bronte, in the outline of Bronte pool, that kind of thing. I, um, I think this is like neither here nor there. <laughs> it's true, it's like peeking out. Yeah, um, and if you wanted to show both, then maybe like standing a little bit to the right would have would have yeah. done a little bit better. Quick rating out of 10, Pat? Uh, rating out of 10 for this one, probably six and a half. All right, all right. All right, next photo. I think this one's actually quite good. This is probably one of the, I think personally, it's the best out of these. <laughs> It'd be funny if you didn't agree. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. But... <laughs> New image. I don't know about that part there. The, what the happened <laughs> there? I saw it. I, I that was that that's uh, that, that's. Um, Did I send you the right one? Wait, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh, that's disastrous. That is a disaster. Let's just pretend that that okay. part of the image. Let's isn't pretend there. that doesn't exist. Oh. Give me a little bit of background. Oh, all right. Basically, this is in uh, Cappadocia. I was staying at a part that's not super central, which is actually kind of like a bit away from where all the cool stuff is in terms of all the hundreds of balloons. Then there was just one stray balloon and this little like mountain range shot in the 7200. And I just dreamt of a balloon just being at the right place at the right time. And eventually there was one. And uh, yeah. So magically appeared. This is actually real. This is not actually a Photoshop, which is why I like it more. Maybe that's mm. because I'm biased. But on that nice layering and yeah, cool salience, I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's basically it. Yeah, it looks great. Uh, the only criticism I have is the crop. The crop for me doesn't really do it because all of this stuff in the foreground yeah. is like, like, like what is it? It's fields and there's a house here and there's not a lot that's interesting in this foreground. Yeah. For me, like I would have like darkened it out or, yeah. or cropped it more like where you zoom in just a little bit more and you have a little bit more negative space at the top. Um, and it simplifies the composition because then you only have the layers and then you yeah. only have the balloon. But I think the intention here is really, really nice. I love the whole like beam of light going into the balloon kind of thing. I think that's really cool. Um, also, I think you've kept the highlights. I'm sorry. I think you've kept the um, shadows nicely. Uh, you know, you can see the pattern of the balloon and it adds that just that little bit more to to the image whereas i'm sure other people would have just completely darkened down that balloon into like into nothing into just shadow yeah. especially since it's quite a, a backlit kind of shot but i think having that little bit of that little bit of detail shows you that it's a it is a hot air balloon uh and there's, there's some kind of pattern on it and, and it looks uh looks quite nice to me i see i'm a little scared about uh two minimalistic photos but which is uh I don't know, just me, I guess. It takes a bit of bravery. Yeah. It takes a bit of bravery to like to shoot just one or two elements in an yeah. image. Uh, and I think especially as like <laughs> the, the more you do that, the closer it kind of delves into like a artsy fartsy kind of <laughs> mentality, which I think that's what people are scared of. Like just, you know, just it's too simple, that kind of thing. But I think yeah, it, it is, it, for me, in my case anyway, like my preference is to continue to keep simplifying until it's it's just the essence of whatever it is that that the composition is all about. And quick rating while I pull out the next photo. This one for me is a seven. It's good, could have been better with the crop. All right, all right. Could, it, could have been a seven and a half or like an eight with a fair and different. Nine crop a more simplified composition. All right, so that is all the images. So Pat, how would you rate my photography as a whole? Give it a little overall rating, hmm. summary tips, whatever you like. Hmm. I think um, like you're a good photographer. Like there's, <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's, 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 there's kind of like no doubt about it. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of things that you're doing in your images that have a lot of intention uh, and you know what a good composition looks like, you know how to spot. Uh, certain elements and, and know what looks interesting to you. And you can definitely express that in your images. And I think it's really nice. You've got a very simple uh, composition style, very similar to mine, which is very nice. Um, but I think, again, you know, there is just the little things here and there, little tweaks 
uh, you know, stuff like positioning and stuff like timing. A few more techniques in the toolbox around like framing and those yeah. kind of things that I think will be really useful for you uh, moving forward. But otherwise, like it's it's really not that far. Just slowing down and, and, and a couple more intentional kind of thought processes before you click the shutter. I think that will do you wonders, you know, slowing down your compositions and adding more elements, centering things more and, and, and just being a little bit more deliberate in your uh, layout and positioning. I mean, personally, I think you kind of like hit it, hit the nail on the head basically because a lot of times I'm personally just like shooting videos and whatever. So basically I'm like, oh, this video actually looks nice. It'd probably make a good photo. Mm. And then I just like click one away and then I go back to the computer like, oh man, I really could have done this a little bit better, which, yeah, there's a big reason why I don't post that many photos, you know, it's, it's don't hate the player, hate the game, you know, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. I get it. I get it. But I mean, again, you know, they are, they are really, they are really good. No, I definitely agree. Places. And there's definitely things that I did not notice as well, which so we're all trying to get better, mm. which is the most important part. While we're here, thank you, Pat, <laughs> for reviewing my images. This guy is very busy. I'll catch you next one. Goodbye.